That video clip was actually banned when it came out in 65 because they didn't really want to offend anybody who stuttered the BBC, but then they put it back on when it became so popular. Written by Pete Townsend on the train, uh, and it was written about old people who really didn't get it. And I think it was inspired by the fact that the Queen Mother had his Packard hearse removed from the street where she drove every morning because it just irritated her. So Pete Townsend, of course, wrote that one. OK, we're at the... Art in the 60s exhibition, Art in the 60s from the Tate Britain, and with me is the, cur uh, the curator, Mary Kistler. Mary, this is a fantastic exhibition. Isn't it a brilliant exhibition? It's, it's very good. This is from 1966, which of course is relevant to the clip we've just played. Yes. Tell us about this. Uh, well, this is a portrait um, of Mrs. Munro, painted by Howard Hodgkins. In fact, it took him three years to do it, and um, her husband actually had a, a work in the original Tate show, which was of Martians but the Martians didn't come to New Zealand. They may never come to New Zealand. Uh, but it's a, it's a wonderful work, and it's great that you're filming this because, in fact, this is only here for another month, and then it has to go back because Howard Hodgkins ha is having a show, and he wants it home. So look, you're telling me that this is actually a portrait of his wife? This is how he absolutely. saw his wife? Absolutely. I mean, haven't you ever sort of she seen like a, a woman standing like that in the morning? Yeah, well, she looks like a meat grinder to me, but, but anyway. She doesn't look that lovely sinuous form. You've got her head yes. and the curve in her back, and she's wearing something really fashionable, and possibly standing in front of a painting. Good oak, whatever. Um, what about this one over here, Billy well, Apple? These, See, there's a number of works here by Billy Apple and um, they were all part of an exhibition that he had in London at Gallery 3 and it was at the time when he was changing from being Barry Bates to Billy Apple. And this is uh, a, a work where only one of the apples is bronze, all of the rest are real. And of course the original show was only on for a month. So the apples could gradually sort of start to um, rot down and you get this wonderful perfume. We're yeah, not sure no, if no. they we're not sure if they're gonna last four months. We might have to replace the apples. I hope it's not gonna drive people away from the exhibition. Absolutely not. People will come just to see those apples. Okay, and behind you yes. is an even better. Look at this one. Well, went to the uh, foundry where Henry Moore had used to sculpt his, bronze, his bronzes and he took an apple. It took him a long time to find the right apple and he had it cast once and then he took a bite and had it cast again and then he gobbled the rest of it up. And the name of the work, 2 minutes 22 seconds, is the time it took for the entire apple to be eaten. He's out of his mind, clearly. No, needless, needless to say, it confused the bronze casters but they did as they were told. Look, Mary, that's fantastic. What we're going to do is we'll go to another clip after this break. Um, and later on, we're going to go to an area of the exhibition where David Medella has a wonderful moving sculpture. It's kind of like this bubble sculpture. which it's is like absolutely flying stunning. through a cloud. It's He's exactly trying right. to recreate clouds. From bringing it all back home out of 1965, you notice there's a couple of errors and they're intentional on that. For instance, the lyrics say $11 bills and the picture says $20. Um, and in excess, when they covered that for that cover, that clip idea for Need You Tonight, Mediate, they also included an intentional mistake in that. We're at an art gallery, the Auckland Art Gallery, and it's the exhibition called Art in the 60s from Tate Britain. This is by David Medulla. Now what it is, is a, a sculpture of bubbles. He wanted to challenge the static nature of sculpture, and so of course this moves, and throughout the day you get these bubbles sort of moving up like clouds, and they represent clouds, um, and it's bubbles pumped through a compressor, and they move, and if we stand here for a little bit, we might see it moving. No, we're not going to. We haven't got time. We're so busy. Um, on the floor, it's a wee bit slippery, so still to come on this program, we'll have, um, now, the band that were named Australians of the Year in 1967, and the Beach Boys released an album called Pet Sounds. It was called the best and greatest album of all time by Mojo Magazine. We'll have a clip from that later on, but first, it's The Doors. It's Gustav Metzger, and he's creating an artwork, believe it or not, just on that Beatles song, Christmas 1967, sort of the beginning of the end for Paul McCartney and John Lennon's relationship. I think John Lennon described that song as a pathetic juxtaposition of nonsense or something. He was very annoyed that his songs always ended up on the B-sides and Paul McCartney's songs always ended up on the A-sides. Anyway, um, more about now this guy, Gustav, what's his name? Metzger, Gustav yeah. Metzger. He was a Viennese artist who came to London, much more serious than a lot of the other artists in the show uh, from a political sense and he uh, was 
part one of the organisers of the Destruction in Art Symposium. And what he did with this particular artwork was he set up this sheet of uh, nylon on the banks of the Thames, and then he attacked it with hydrochloric acid in a spray pump. And it was a, what it did as it dissolved was it exposed a view at one, if you turned one direction, of St Paul's Cathedral representing the church, and the other direction, the Houses of Parliament representing the state, the two great power bodies of the last millennium. And what he was sort of talking about was what was happening in politics at the time, that in spite of all the optimism at the beginning of the 60s, by 1968, with the threat of nuclear annihilation and the Vietnam War, once again there was the sense that there could be another world war. I see. Yeah. So quite a sort of punchy series. And church and state fighting each other between well, the nylon you know, and the they're the ones who always control power. Yes. You look at any nation, and historically it's been church and state. Yes. There it is behind us. There's a sort of a representation of, of, of what it may have looked like. Well, this is a he, it's been done again, in effect, because the first one inevitably dissolved over a period of time. So what you've got is a reconstruction of it. It's how embarrassing you've got. Someone's forgotten to take the rubbish out no, there. That's well, that, thing. of course, is the very famous re re replacement bag of rubbish, because when this show first opened at Tate, one of the cleaners thought they'd tidy up and they threw it away. So now at night, this has to have a cover over it which says, work of art, do not remove. <laughs> After the break, Australians of the Year from 1967 song. This is by Stephen Willits. It's Visual Field Automatic Number no. 1. He was fascinated by how the human brain tries to make patterns out of random flashes. So my brain is, of course, trying to make a pattern out of this. Um, we're at the Auckland Art Gallery for Art in the 60s from Tate Britain. This is by um, William Turnbull. It's called Five by One. And he liked the fact that people could walk all the way through it, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. I was fascinated by space and by the simplicity of something that people can just sort of comprehend straight away and very easily, which is, of course, what I'm doing. I can comprehend, uh, comprehend that, as opposed to this by Gillian Ayres called Distillation, which I'm having trouble comprehending. In fact, when you're at an art gallery, isn't it interesting how sometimes it's hard to tell what's art and what isn't? For instance, is this part of the art? I mean, is that art? Or is it just that? And what about that? Is that the art? You see, and sometimes it's... For the uninitiated, you can sort of be caught staring at something like, come over here, I'll show you. Come with me. See, this here. How embarrassing if you stood in front of this for a while and went, mmm, mmm, mmm. Yeah. Oh, that's... Mmm. Uh, hey. <laughs> anyway. After the break, can I just tell you, after the break, um, in fact, no, let's, let's take a break, let's just play Jimi Hendrix right away. This was the last song on the bill at Woodstock. From the greatest album ever made, according to Mojo magazine in 1995, Brian Wilson's masterpiece, Sloop John B, The Beach Boys. We're standing in front of a Patrick Caulfield at the Auckland Art Gallery for Art in the 60s from Tate Britain. These guys here are from some school near Ellerslie, right, Arthur? Yeah, Michael Park. Yeah. Are you an art uh, major? Oh, not really. Yeah. I'm just kind of in the art class, kind of enjoy it, you yeah. know. Yeah. I like this, this Patrick Caulfield. What do you reckon, Ben? Uh, it's quite nice. I like the colours. Well, yeah. the colours, as you can say. Yeah. Um, they quite stand out, you know, the yeah. squares and the roses. Yeah. Yeah. Are you an artist as well, Ben, or...? Uh, no, I'm just a filthy correspondence person that's oh. not doing correspondence. Oh, I see. So you just came along because there was a trip to the art gallery and you should have been doing PE or maths or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's have a look at this one over here, shall we? See, this picture here, um, if I could just draw your attention to this Richard Hamilton. This was a photograph uh, of Mick Jagger and this guy here, Robert Fraser, who ran an art gallery in London in the 60s. And it was a wild sort of a place. I mean, people like Marion Faithful and the Stones and everyone was there. And they're always having wild parties and um, he really sort of pushed the boundaries. This photograph was of Jagger and Fraser being arrested after doing some drugs or something. It was a drug bust or something like that. But what he's done is he screen printed it and touched it up with some colour and put this um, um, sort of relief piece here that made sort of brought the handcuffs to the attention. So it's a really nice piece, isn't it? Um, okay, well, what we'll do is these guys here have drawn my attention to some sort of wind tunnel somewhere. So after the break, big event. Photos of wind tunnel. Oh. Going on. Just photos of Wind Tunnel. Well, so we're going to have a look at it. We're going to have a look at it. And Led Zeppelin from their second album, their biggest hit after the break. Yeah. From their, their first hit single, that was, from their second album, Led Zeppelin 2. We're here at the Auckland Art Gallery for Art in the 60s from Tate Britain. Some beautiful works, including this one from Bruce Lacey. Um, it talks about 
women's sexual revolution and freedom and liberation, I guess, uh, post-war availability of condoms. This uh, perspex mask, you can see through it, and inside there are clippings and rippings from pornographic magazines. When you walk past it, a little seeing eye flips a switch and the compressor starts and these rubber gloves are supposed to blow up and sort of vacillate and fondle the breasts of this creature. Um, the thing I like most about this thing though is the aperture around this end between the legs. It sort of looks like, I don't know, a sort of a Eurogenital opening or a, a docking bay or some sort of uh, seminal receptacle. I mean, it's, Anyway, it's a great exhibition. It finishes on the 2nd of July. You ought to come down and have a look at it at the Art Gallery in Auckland. We'll finish with a clip from an album uh, called Out of Our Heads by the Rolling Stones. This clip, um, this song, the riff to it, was written by Keith Richards, and he reckoned he woke up in a hotel in, um, in Florida. I think it was the... Uh, Fort Harrison Hotel. He woke up and he wrote this riff. Uh, he recorded it on a cassette player that he had at the time. He later described it as being two minutes uh, riff and 40 minutes me snoring. Anyway, ironically, when they got to the studio, they decided to discard everything that Keith Richards wanted to do except the riff. He wanted a great horn section in the song, but you know, they didn't want that, and it turned out to be satisfaction. Who can forget the Britney... Britney Spears performance of this at the 2000 MTV Video Awards. Good night, everybody, and thanks for joining us tonight at Flashbacks at the Auckland Art Gallery.